The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everybody to our latest best practices webinar, uh, Navigating Uncharted Territory, the Future of School Transportation, What to Expect in 2021. We're going to give about a half a minute for folks to file in and we'll be right back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, Best Practices webinar with NIAP. We're so excited to kick off the new year with a new webinar. We have a lot to cover. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to also welcome TransFinder President and CEO Antonio Civitello. I'd like to say a few words. Tony, come on board. Thanks so much. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Uh, Rick, can I just say Happy New Year? I mean, I know it's still January. Is that all right? It's still say Happy New Year to everybody here? I, I, I mean, think so. <laughs> I do. Well, Happy New Year. I mean, tomorrow's the 29th of January. I think, you know, that I'm stretching it, right? I'm stretching it. So, you know, I don't know about you when you write the, the count, you know, the date. Do you put 2020 there or do you put 21 because you want to forget 20? I think it's one of those. But, hey. First NIAP TransFinder webinar in 2021. It's so awesome to be back with everybody. And I know we're going to have a great turnout. Uh, and really what an awesome discussion about the future of school transportation. What to expect in 2021. Wow, can't wait to hear all about that. And maybe some of you guys have some good crystal balls about that. Just want to make sure, remind you about these webinars. You know, it's important that we bring the right people. The ones that are in the trenches. They're right there in the ground floor, they got the ears to the ground. They're the ones who actually know what's going on. And you know, let's guess what? We love that they're sharing what they're doing, what's worked for them, what, learn, what lesson they've learned. And really that's about that. We wanna make sure that you recognize that these series are about people right in the trenches. And let's face it, all of you, well, I wanna thank you again, again, and again, and again, how great of a job you guys are all doing to make sure that every day you're keeping students as safe as possible. So thank you again. I know we've had some challenges and uh, I don't think these uh, challenges are gonna go, go away anytime soon, but you guys have all risen to the occasion. Big thank you always. Thanks to the today's panelists, which we got some good things here. Talk about what's going on. Again, thank you for all of you that you took time today. I know you're busy, you got a lot going on. Uh, there's not too many things, you know, happy new year. No, you've already passed that festivity. And now we're really getting down in business. So I was really excited about that. One last reminder, we had this thing going on last year called Stop Finder Communication. So it's an app that, that we released over a year ago, uh, over a year ago. And we made that available to everybody. So it's about communicating with parents. And a lot of you have actually used that product to communicate within the school district. So we're offering that free again. Um, again, you don't have to be a client. It could just be also be a prospect to use that product. But it's stop on communication. We're offering it uh, for all of you uh, at no cost through June 30th. So if you want more information about it, please send email at marketing at transfender.com and uh, make sure you, you say it's about stop finder and we'll get that. Lastly, I always get these questions like, are you guys recording these webinars? Of course we are. They're always recorded. And by the way, we have so many different things. If everyone want to go, if you go to our best practice uh, site of our uh, tra uh, transfunder.com, you're actually going to see all the other ones that we did last year. And it was interesting. You know, maybe some of you guys want to get reminded of all that stuff that we talked about. And some of you maybe want to forget all about it, but it's all right there. It's on transfunder.com, best practices uh, uh, page, cool stuff. But listen, done talking. I'd like to introduce uh, the NIAP Executive Director, Dave Christopher. Man, Dave, what a 2020. Um, we're all looking forward to a completely better 21. And obviously, it's the same people, the same uh, motivation, and the same enthusiasm. I know it. So, Dave, take it away. Thank you, Tony. 
And uh, thank you for providing this platform where we get together on a pretty regular basis and talk about where we're at today. I also want to thank you for uh, presenting at the NIAF Winter Workshop coming up February 18th and 19th. So you'll be there to talk about the peace plan. So, uh, you know, tune in to see what Tony's got to say. This is a great uh, presentation that he has done nationally and he's going to do it for us as well. And it certainly, I think, will help us in our operations. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce our panel. Uh, we'll start with Bill Harvey. I think you all know Bill. He's been on many of these uh, webinars. He's the Director of Transportation, Security, and Safety at the Honey Eye Falls Lima School District out by Rochester, New York. Next, I'd like to introduce Brad Conklin, who is the uh, business official at the Valley Central School District in Orange County. Uh, and uh, next uh, is Don Russell, uh, who is the Director of Transportation at the, the large Monroe Woodbury uh, School District down in Orange County. Uh, so thank you for all for uh, agreeing to be on this webinar today. And I'm sure that uh, we will learn a lot from your input. Last but not least, uh, I'd like to introduce Rick Rico, our moderator, who keeps us all on our toes and moves this uh, discussion along. And uh, I want to thank you all for doing this today and helping out the industry with some some uh, new ideas and thoughts on how we how we continue to navigate through this uh, this unprecedented time, if you will. So, Rick, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much, David, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, I know you definitely have had to, you've had your metal tested for sure, and you've done a great job. Um, so uh, we were talking yesterday. We had a really great discussion um, preparing for today, and one of the things that kind of came up was this idea that we are at the halfway point, pretty much, of the school district. We talked about how you know it's halftime, and you know a lot of things happen in half times. You know, coaches, teams get together and they could be way down in the score um, and they come together and they look and they they analyze, they see what's been working, what hasn't been working, what kind of adjustments they need to make. Maybe they also have like a riveting speech from somebody that kind of like rallies the troops together. And then you have probably seen many games where that first half and the second half are very different. Or maybe you had a great first half despite all the challenges and you just want to continue to not uh, rest on your laurels and you wanna just finish out strong. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what the second half looks like um, going going forward. Um, before we start though, I wanted to just have all of our panelists, I'll start with Bill and go to Brad, Don, and um, and Dave, if you wanna add anything at the end. Um, tell us a little bit about you, your title, and uh, your school district. And then we'll, I just really wanna talk about, the first question I really wanna open it with is this idea of just really how have, has COVID changed things for your district in like the big picture? And then we'll get into some of the um, the adjustments you've made and uh, you're looking to do. In a, and then we're gonna take a, a poll as well. So a lot to go over. So Bill, starting with you, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your district. Great, thanks Rick, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, been in the transportation business for uh, over, well over 30 years now and uh, this is definitely a new experience this year, and it's also great to come back during halftime here as we prepare to go into the locker room and talk about what we need to do to uh, win the second half, right? Because I played uh, a big role with you and Dave and with uh, New York State with NIAP, um, planning out the first half, right? So, um, which has looked different for all of us, depending on where we're at. So we have a district of about 2,300 kids, of which I think I've got around uh, 1400 that are riding the bus every day so you know our new norm is mom and dad driving them to school and we give up our bus loops and we you know adjust it our way so what you know looking forward is an important thing to do because we have to you know how do we get those kids back on the bus right so um very interesting times and and to serve the district as both a, a director of transportation and of security has allowed me to stand out there and, and uh, direct traffic at the same time and put together all the plans so uh, very busy time and a very exciting time, really, as we look at the second half. Thank you. I know I'll contact Bill sometimes in the middle of the day. He goes, Rick, I, what do you call it? You go, I got guard duty or something hey, duty. You traffic said, duty. Uh, traffic duty. And uh, I'm like, okay, I got it. So uh, you definitely are one of those guys. Tony talks about it all the time. You got to be flexible. And uh, yeah. I think you're probably you're more flexible than ever. So thank you so much, Bill. Brad. 
Thanks, Rick. So um, yeah, we're down here in Valley Central School District in Orange County. So uh, me and my role, I oversee all the financial operations for the district. Uh, we have a roughly $108 million budget. I oversee facilities, uh, all aspects of, of purchasing, payroll, insurance. Uh, I oversee food service. And of course, uh, one of my responsibilities is to oversee transportation as well. And, and we, we have contract transportation here at Valley Central, but we do handle all the uh, routing in-house and, and that's handled by me and, and one assistant in my office. And it's a, it's a monumental job. And um, you talked a little bit about flexibility and that's, that's kind of been the, the game plan this year is to be flexible starting from you know, in, in August where we really didn't have firm plans on whether we were gonna open on time or not. And then we made a decision, we're opening on time. That was our goal. And, and how do we get those kids to school? So, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times we've had to look at our routes and make adjustments and shift students from this schedule to that schedule. And, and then we, we um, in order to lighten the load on our buses this year, we, we put out a, a form for parents to fill out if they could do parent transportation. So uh, I, I, flexibility is the name of the game this year for sure. Thank you, Brad. You know, I, I, I forgot to mention this. Um, while uh, we're not going to be able to hear you during this webinar, you definitely can have your voices heard by by chatting in the dialog box. Um, and so already I got a question from Lawrence asking you, Brad, how many students uh, do you transport? Or how many students do you have in the district and how many are you transporting? All right, so uh, roughly 4,300 students and um, we, we transport just about all of them, believe it or not. We have a very limited group of walkers. Um, so on a normal day, we have about 70 uh, packages that go out. We run a three tier system high school, middle school, elementary, they're all on their own runs. Uh, we have private parochials, we have BOCES, CTEC, um, you name it, it's a, fairly, it's, it's a fairly large operation. Super, so again, please keep those questions coming because we will get to them as quickly as we can. I have a list of questions and uh, Bill gave me a hearty list of questions as well. And um, we're gonna get to these, but your questions obviously are very important to us as well. So keep, keep them coming. And last but not least, Dawn. Hi, I'm Dawn Russell, and I'm the Transportation Director for Monroe Woodbury School District here in Orange County. And um, in my span of 20 or so years in school transportation, I have worked for four different school districts. And, um, you know, it really always felt that you could just move your chair, right? You're going from one desk to the other. It's the job. The job was the job. If you knew your job, then, you know, the transition was easy. Until 2019-20, when we um, opened with a cyber attack and we closed with a pandemic. So um, it was uh, probably, it, not probably, it was the most challenging year of my career. You know? And yet you're still, you're still smiling. <laughs> yes, yeah, smile. Um, the thing is, is that there's so many things that are out of our control, right? But the only thing that we can do is focus. And um, I was thinking about, you know, being uh, a panelist today, and um, you just have to be open to new perspectives, right? And um, just focus on what's important, because I think just here on this panel, what's important to me is probably not as important to somebody else here, but just focus on what's important for your district. And uh, we are, we're operating on a 50% deficit right now on drivers. We have 123 tier routes, and we're operating with about uh, 50 of our drivers out. And we're still making it happen because no is not an answer here. We have to make it happen. You, you you said the other day that when uh, the, the the expectation from the community is basically no is not an answer. So you got to figure it out uh, or there could be pushback. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we run maybe 10 or uh, up to 15 sports trips a day. And those drivers so are taken off of their routes in the afternoon. And um, sorry. And uh you know, so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to cover. We have a brand new facility here uh, with the turf and, um, excuse me one second. That... This is real life, folks. So Sorry. just so you know, while, while Dawn's um, getting somebody in the room to maybe keep it down, Dawn's putting in 14 hour days. You work through the holidays. So uh, 
this is somebody who is tried and true in the trenches and doing what she needs to to get it done. So. Right, but you know that, that pressure of having to do it, it's, you know, you, you do feel proud in the end when you can get it done. And it's not me, it's not Dawn, it's my team. You know, I can't believe the ideas that they come up with and how we make it happen every single day. It is awesome. a little exhausting, but. Yeah. Dave, I want to have you jump in for a quick, and then we're going to get to a question, because we do have a question from Mark right off the bat, piggybacking up with Don, the minute you were talking about your driver shortage, I think Mark was already typing in the, the question field something about having a driver shortage. But we'll get to that question in a moment. Dave, anything you want to add to um, our intro here? Uh, just very, very quickly, something Bill said at the very beginning. Uh, you know, uh, Bill worked on a committee, as did uh, many other dedicated people, to uh, it was a small task force of NIAP members who worked hard to put down uh, a lot of ideas and how to manage our operations going into this pandemic way back in the spring of 2020. And uh, uh, we communicate a lot of that information out to school districts. And a lot of school districts actually are, you know, using those ideas. Those are, those are ideas that have never been thought of before. And the, I guess the message is uh, now that we're at halftime, uh, we, we need to uh, review those ideas, those, those processes, those, those thoughts that we came up with in the spring and alter, fine tune, or say, hey, they're working great, let's continue on. So that's kind of the process that I think we want to be involved in today and going forward is, you know, updating the plan, you know, uh, looking at it from different perspectives, see what works, see what doesn't. I appreciate everybody's work on that big project. That was, uh, that was uh, a big project that everybody contributed greatly to. That's awesome. And Bill has said multiple times, I know I've heard others say the same thing, that there are some processes that you, or processes, however you say it, um, that were um, necessary in the midst of COVID, but are going to stay. And you're going you're gonna to keep these processes in place, even post-pandemic, uh, because there's still value in them. Like even, you know, how you disinfect your buses or other, you know, other things that you've had to do out of necessity. Um, before I forget, because I don't want to forget the poll, um, we have a poll question. I'd like to see if we can pop on, and you have an opportunity, those who are attending, to vote on this poll um, about the technologies you're looking to employ to help manage driver and staff shortage. Because again, this is the question that Mark asked, and I'm going to turn it on. We're going to talk about the driver shortage in a moment, but right now, just uh, you could take a a second to answer this question. What technology are you looking to employ to help manage driver and staff shortage? Um, driver app metrics and KPI reporting to track efficiency, parent communication tools, all of the above. And if there's something that's not mentioned there, if you could click other, but then also in that message board, um, just type in what um, areas that you might be looking at implementing, what tools you may be implementing. Um, I'm gonna go, through our panel while this stays on our screen for a little bit and ask uh, what technologies either you have already employed as a result of the pandemic or that you're looking to. And I'll start with Bill again. Um, Bill, any, any thoughts on that? Well, I think the parent communication tools um, that we have in district, whatever that tool might be, um, you know, we're prepared to use that and have used it to communicate uh, with parents on various different aspects of the pandemic. But now we can also use that for driver shortage and we've actually inserted messaging into our communications with parents about the fact that there is opportunity here and need for help and i think the other key thing is the metrics and kpis um i was on a chapter meeting this morning and, and one of the uh, directors mentioned that he was all set on drivers right now and then he then he followed that statement up with said but um with with the work i have now i'm all set so we have to remember that it's not it's not where we're at today, right? Like as I've, as I've downsized, if you will, the work to be appropriate to the situation and meet my current staffing, I have to look back, take a step back and look at what you're gonna need if we return to normal, all the schools going every day. So I'm down seven drivers. So that's the part that scares me is I gotta get those seven people in, right? Plus anybody else that leaves. And then you have to figure out what to do with them if they come in now and I don't have a spot for them, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, the metrics, you've got to know exactly where you're at and where you're at today may not be where you need to be in September of 2021. That's good. Thank you, Bill. How are you, Brad? So 
we're in a little different position where we have contract transportation and uh, knock on wood we we understand there's a driver shortage out there um our contractor has been uh very good about uh recruiting and hiring and uh, we did make a change mid-year we're now with first student and i know they have a pretty robust online advertising and recruiting program um but we have had times in the past where we've had to uh, work with the, uh, you know, with the contractor and the teachers who are, for example, trying to schedule field trips. We, you know, as many uh, field trips as we can limit on a possible day, um, that helps. Um, but uh, knock on wood, our our area, we're doing okay. Excellent, excellent. Any other tools that you're looking at uh, implementing uh, this year? um not particularly i mean first student is kind of handling all that on our behalf and they do have a pretty uh, a good network of drivers that they're able to pull in from other areas if they need it um we, you know as much as they're, they're filling that gap we're trying to do our best to, to fill sub gaps you know i know that's not directly related to this but that's where we're feeling the pinch and with teachers out on quarantine um, we're having a real hard time uh, keeping classes covered on, in the classroom side of things. Very good. Don, how about you? What tools are you guys looking at implementing or have you implemented in the midst of this pandemic? I think you're on mute. Uh, okay. So okay. Uh, we are not transfinder users here at Monroe Woodbury, but we, uh, we have Versatrans and we are going to be migrating over to, uh, you know, Traversa. Uh, I think it's uh, it'll be more user friendly for us. And I feel like um, it will give us a better way to communicate with parents because I feel like now more than ever, we, we have to communicate way more than we, we ever had to about many things. So um, it's a, it would be a better tool for us. Um, also just, you know, merging with our uh, student database making sure you know that everything is up to date um i mean right now although we don't have rfid you know where people are swiping on and off the bus we do uh take attendance for uh, you know contact tracing purposes and we've utilized that as a means to be able to look at how many kids are really riding on the bus and that's why we're able to get through when we're 50 drivers short you know that's half the we couldn't have done it if we didn't have something to guide us. So, and, um, you know, and so we, we look at those and we've combined many, many, many runs in order to keep going. But in the perfect world, uh, we, we're, we, um, we're surveying our own drivers. We sent out a Google form survey and um, because they are the people in the trenches, right? They know what they love about their job, what they don't love about their job, what they love about what I'm doing that I'm not doing for them, I want to know because I want, I want, you know, to proof this operation, right? And uh, we want to keep going with school transportation and the yellow bus. So um, I want to, um, we're bringing in a couple of drivers from, you know, who have routes to help with training so that we can hopefully get a lot of people out there and get them trained, but you need the hands, right? So those are all the things we're, but when you surveyed the drivers, by the way, I want to mention one quick, you probably heard Tony's introduction um, about Stop Finder communication, which is a, we're offering that for free. It's not usually a free tool, but we've been offering it for free. So even if we don't refer to our competitors um, by name, we try to use the expression brand X. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying internally. Um, so uh, even if you have brand X, it's okay, you know, for now, it's okay. Uh, but seriously, Stop Finder has been a, one of those tools that um, we have found even our, one thing we love about our clients is they themselves are incredibly innovative. And while we made that tool specifically for districts to com uh, communicate with their parents, um, some of them started using it to communicate within themselves. So Brad might use it to communicate with his superintendent uh, and other building principals. And so all of a sudden we realized, wow, there's a whole other um, use for this tool. So just if you are interested in just checking it out and seeing if it's it's not going to cost you anything, and um, it's something that we really uh, believe is is important. Now, when you mentioned the survey you had with drivers, um, you said it like really made them feel like their voices were heard. Like they 
you know, I, I was on this, um, uh, I was in a booth at a trade show a couple of days ago, and one person said that their drivers, they really, they know in their heart that their drivers probably don't feel like they're that important. And yeah, I, I think resonated with someone on the board and uh, our panel, and you just taking that survey, just literally launching the survey before you did anything else with it, that actually sent a message, didn't it? Well, I hope so. They they did start to respond immediately, and um, I, you know I'm very fortunate to have uh, staff, secretaries, and clerical that are really great with these programs, and so um, you know so I can hear. It's not a really big office, you know, and so we hear. I hear every time a survey result comes in, I can hear. Oh, it's either good or bad. We want it all. We want the good and the bad, right? Because that's what's going to make us better. And so they are responding. Some anonymously and some not, and even people who maybe aren't so happy are still using their names. So it, it's got to be good, and you know, it's got to be you know something positive it has to come out of it. I, I'm hopeful. And what system did you use for the survey, Karen? Karen's asking me here. Oh, uh, we use Google Forms. Okay, so that doesn't even cost you anything. Right, and, and literally, you know, <laughs> it was hard because drivers don't always have emails or they don't act their email and or maybe they don't want to and now we've got them ordering their contractual coats from the Google Forms and we had people were calling out for a little while on Google Forms uh, it, it's like you know it's a different time I never thought we'd see the day where we could get this to work but it has worked you know, early on um, in our one of our very first webinars, someone mentioned, uh, one of our panelists mentioned how the pandemic was actually forcing drivers to embrace technology like never before. Um, they were, some of them never had email addresses or district email addresses. Some of them never had their checks direct deposited and those kind of things. So that was moving everybody to be more digitally focused. Uh, I wanna go to the survey results and then I have a question about, you know, um, I wanna get into, uh, you know, short-term plans for, uh, you know, going into June, um, you know, is the goal to get, you know, every student in the building every day, you know, kind of look at what your your short-term goals are uh, for 2021. So here are the results. Bridget, do you want to read the results? Because you, I, I like the way you do it better than I do it. <laughs> sure, I'm happy to. Uh, so from, uh, from those who voted, um, really 50% all of the above uh, parent communication tools, metrics and KPI reporting to track efficiencies in driver apps are, are all going to be important um, for managing driver and staff shortages. Um, 21% are on driver apps, 15% metrics and KPI reporting, and 18% parent communication tools. 12% um, uh, said other, and a couple of the responses I got were um, Synovia, mobile data tracking, and um, uh, taking attendance on student ridership and, and some good old-fashioned efficient routing. Very good. Thank you so much, Bridget. You're welcome. Um, Hey, I can I weigh in on something here? Yeah, please do, David. Now, you always forget me, so I have to jump in all the time. So, uh, <laughs> That's not true. No, I, 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 no, it's not true. I'm just kidding. So I, I, I understand that there's, there's support for some of these technologies on our survey, uh, but uh, what, what troubled me there is that, uh, you know, it looked like maybe we only got about 50%. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, what's in it for me if I buy into these technologies? I don't think we talk about that a lot. And, it's, and it occurred to me that, you know, some of these things could actually make our jobs easier with the driver app thing. If we're able to communicate with our drivers better, we're certainly able to, uh, you know, get them more invested in, you know, their jobs, make them feel, you know, important and, and valued, if you will, Don, you know, in terms of the comments that you, you receive. And, and certainly the, uh, you know, the parent communication, you know, cut down on phone calls and, uh, you know, that could drive some of our KPIs. If we're, if we're getting information from parents on arrival times and, and uh, you know, buses that are late or didn't show, you know, that all turns into good data that we can use to make better operations and thus, you know, uh, make our jobs a little easier. I think our industry as a whole, and that is a whole, I shouldn't say that, uh, some, uh, some, uh, areas of our industry have been slow in, in embracing technology. And I think we spoke to that earlier about drivers in terms of uh, uh, or signing on to email and et cetera. 
And I think is, you know, the more that we push that and, and uh, the more that we uh, explain the value of it, I think it will in the long run make our jobs as, as school transportation uh, professionals uh, somewhat easier. Certainly, uh, you know, uh, we'll be more accountable because we always are when we have new technology, the more data to work with, but that's not a bad thing. And given the budget situation we're in, the more that we can, you know, look at what we're doing and try to get better at it, the better we will come to be. We should have a whole discussion, a whole webinar just on technologies, different technologies, certainly uh, uh, routing software, but all other kinds that make the job easier. I'll be quiet now. Go ahead, Rick. Oh, that's great. That is very good, David. And you made me think of something that Don said yesterday. It was pre-COVID, but it was about... You, you could only run four out of five buses and how some parent, I think it was four to five buses or three out of four for, I think it was like a field trip, I think, or something. And parents went to Facebook to complain. And one of the things yeah. that we talk about even with Stop Finder, the communication app specifically is if a parent complains and they can go on an app really quickly and either just vent or explain to you their concern and then you can get back to them immediately, they feel heard. And they're probably less likely to call the local TV station or um, go on Facebook and complain. They can say, okay, um, they explain to me why, or if a bus is running late and you can send like our, our, uh, our communication app, you know, you can send specifically, if you want to do a geographic, say, you know, a bridge is out. And so it's not just sending it to every parent, it's only sending it to the ones that are gonna literally be affected. You can say, your child's bus is going to be about a 30 minute delay and it's a push like you said david to push of a button and save some headaches bill you're moving forward so that's usually a sign that you got something well i just wanted to tack on to what you were just saying about having the ability to communicate with the parents and whatever tool you use to do that but technology is truly the answer and we've done something as part of our contingency planning yesterday when we were chatting don mentioned that you know um you have to reshuffle the deck or get another deck or what you know what's the next plan right where do we go next right so um but part of our planning was to we've never done this but we actually um went into transfinder and exported our student rider list um into our school messenger our communication tool by bus number so i have everybody in there so if a bus is running late i can send a message just to those students and families that are affected so um and that's something we'll probably do going forward you know why not have that available so we had uh, many of you probably saw there was a tragic helicopter crash in western new york where people uh died and that was in my district and we had to there was a section of roads that were closed for days right and, and so you know we had to come in and use tools like that to, to reroute and communicate that with the parents very good Hey, Brad, I want to bring you in on a conversation. And first of all, a couple of things. I know you have the direct ear to the superintendent. I know I, I know uh, the other panelists do too, but you have a unique relationship because of your role as business official. Um, is there, how much is the, tra or is transportation part of the conversation and decisions being made? And what, um, what advice would you give to those um, in transportation in terms of, um, bringing concerns, needs, even wish lists before the school board and administration? Well, you know, that's a good question because uh, you can argue that transportation is the most important aspect of the school district, right? We have to get kids to school and we have to get them home and, and we have to do it safely. And, and I don't think there's anybody out there in the public that, that has any idea what goes on behind the scenes to make that happen. And I have a unique perspective as well because not, not only do I know the transportation side of things, but I know facilities and lunch. And um, I think having somebody in, in, in my position that, that works directly with the superintendent, I can walk down the hall and, and pop in and say, hey, I got this going on with transportation. What do you think? Um, it, it does help a little bit. And um, there's just not another layer there that you have to go through. So um, just to kind of go back to what we were just talking about, communication with your public is absolutely key. And there's there's nothing that you want to deal with that's out there on Facebook that, that you shouldn't be out in front of, right? So, you know, just for example, yesterday we had, uh, we were one of the only districts in Orange County that chose not to to delay. We had a little stuff from the, the afternoon and the night before, and, and um, we had made the determination earlier that our roads 
we're good and our lots were going to be clear so we came in and then after we made the decision to come in um, there was a number of our other schools that we served that started delaying and, and there was just some question are we are we sure that that school called and um, let those students know and we said no we're not sure but we're going to put out a message anyway just to be sure and, and it ends up we're, we're glad we did because we did have a school that did not reach out so um, absolutely communication is paramount Hey, um, I want to go back to a question that Daniel just asked. I'm just going to go to you, Don, and then I, I want to bring something up Bill said yesterday. Um, he wanted to know, do you remember any of the questions that you asked the drivers? He wanted to maybe see if you could uh, share a few of the questions that were on that driver survey. Uh, yes, actually, look at my, this is what happens to my papers that um, get fogged. So I can always tell we've been fog, you know, the fog machine. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to straighten it out before we logged on. It looks like a it looks like a scroll, like, you know, for the hear ye, hear ye. I jammed up the copier earlier trying to make a copy of this. Um, just, uh, the, you know, their name, which is optional. First, it starts out, um, as many of you know, our district is facing a shortage of drivers um, and difficulty recruiting qualified new drivers. So in the interest uh, well, that we are interested in their thoughts and their input as the driver in the trenches every day. And then the survey is voluntary, but your help is greatly appreciated. And then the results, I would like to bring back to them when we have our safety refresher, which I'm really hoping to have in person. We still have till April 1st, so I'm hoping to have a Zoom meeting. Um, just their name, asking them how long have they been driving, um, what made them uh, decide to become a school bus driver. Um, I like that one. Pros and cons, you know, what are the pros of driving and then what are the cons? And um, and then uh, now that you've been a driver, would you do it again? Yes or no? Um, and then what would you tell a friend who was thinking about becoming a bus driver? And That's great. Know, nice and short. Yeah. Thoughts, suggestions, ideas. Some people have come back and, you know, it's contractual things that they don't like, you know, that changed during their term working here for many years that they didn't like or they think would be better if we did away with that, but you know, those things have to be negotiated, but it's still good to hear, right? So yeah, absolutely. credit where credit's due. My uh, neighboring district, Ralph Perez, uh, you know, he was telling me how he was doing this survey with his drivers. And so um, we don't need to recreate the wheel. No. You know, hey, Don, if, Don, if you could send me an email with that, we can post that because um, we got some requests for those and wanted you to repeat it. But instead of that, we'll just, uh, Posted on our best practices page. Thanks so much. Well, you just I, think it's, I think it's important. That we, we all understand that drivers want to be heard, right? So it's, it's important to to show that you care. You know, I, I, even though our drivers don't work for me directly, I make it a point to get out there, be visible, uh, ask them how are things going with the route. Is there anything that you would like to change? How was your weekend? Um, how's your family doing? And if I got some extra time, I'll hop on a bus and say, you know, I'll, I'll ride with you if that's okay. We'll just have a conversation. I, I think they, they really appreciate just having that conversation and feeling like their voices are heard. That's important. That's a really good point. You know, I know it goes back to like, we all probably learned it in Sunday school, you know, the golden rule of do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. We all love to be heard. We do, you know, and it's that feeling when you're in isolation, which we all have been in isolation, that's one thing that the pandemic has really done is created an isolation that when you hop on a bus and I know Bill you do this also as well and uh, maybe you do as well Don Dave I'm sure you did it when you were in the trenches you know getting on the bus seeing what life is like um on a day-to-day -day basis and makes them feel like just more connected and they, they never forget that yeah well um, I think you get questions about routes and you know why was this this stop moved to, to that other route this year and and I'll say, you know what, I'll print out the routes and, and I'll meet you down at the school and, and I'll show you. Or, you know, they have a suggestion. I'll say, all right, I'll, I'll print them out and we'll take a look at it and see what you think. You, you've got to you've got to take um, what you're saying seriously. And, and if you just can't do it, you've got to explain why. That's right. But we talked about yesterday. I'm not going to repeat the long story, but it's not just we've always done it this way. That's not a good answer. Just like I couldn't stand it when my mother used to say, thankfully, my mother's not on these webinars. I probably wouldn't say it if I knew she'd be watching. But she'd say, because I told you so. That is not a good answer. It's OK answer for a three year old, but it's not a great answer for an adult who was like, well, why are we doing it this way? And 
So I told the ham story. If anybody wants to know the ham story, email marketing at transfire.com. I'll tell you the ham story. But it's not, there's, there's got to be a purpose behind it. You know, we don't just slice off the ends of ham for no reason. Bill, Brad said something earlier that triggered a thought of our conversation yesterday. I thought it was really good. And I think it's something that our attendees would definitely benefit from. And I'm not going to say too much, except hopefully this will trigger your memory about showing your pain. You talked about who you show your pain to and who you don't show your pain to. And I think this is, I hope everybody perks up. I know you're already still perked up, but share what you're talking about there, Bill. So, you know, in this business, especially in transportation, right? We, we've talked about driver shortage already a lot on this call and we talk about it all the time, but it's always our objective not to have our customers feel our pain, right? And that, when at the end of the day, when we, when we figured it out, we made it happen and the customer didn't feel the pain, we scored a win, right? So there's one day, uh, as, as uh, Rick said, I go out there and ride with drivers, but mostly I go out and drive. So when they back into their spot and I'm sitting in the bus next to them because I'm just finishing my route, all allows me an opportunity to chat. I had a driver, we were walking in together after a post trip and he said, how was your day as we came together? And I said, hey. I go, well, we survived it. I go, full, full crisis mode. He goes, really, what's the matter? And I said, well, we we're down, uh, you know, 28% of our drivers weren't here today and everybody's driving, we doubled up routes. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. I had no idea. Is there any way I can help? And the light went off in my head. I'm like, we do such a good job of masking our pain that even our staff doesn't know. And so that kind of resulted in me changing a little bit this year in the last few months since that happened and sharing with them like we could you almost need a barometer right like green yellow red like red we're in crisis mode because they may pop in the office and ask Dawn something and she's like I don't have time right now and they don't realize that she is like in a really bad spot so um, they come in and do their job and then their world is really very small especially during the pandemic when they're not hanging out in the driver's room they don't they just come in get their key go to the lot so they don't know so sometimes if there's one group that needs to know you're in crisis mode it's your team share it with your team and i would say probably even higher up too right bill i mean it's good for the oh, yeah. superintendent to know like we're in a jam and um yeah. they your superintendent probably doesn't want to um you to bury that you probably want he or she probably wants that information yeah and i do and i, and I share that with them i have shared that with my leadership team more so than i have with my staff i never thought about sharing it down right i share it up and you know we are a team here the only way we get through this is all of us pulling together when that driver said to me god geez i wish i know is there anything i can do to help it's like okay you know i got people that would be willing to help in some way if i told them so um it's just important everything that we go through in transportation as managers whether you're a dispatcher head driver director business manager um i think we need to paint that picture of what we're seeing and what we're challenged with to our staff some of our best ideas come out of the staff and you know tomorrow i'm going to have an in-service day in person and you know we're going to be talking about what we did to make you know in the first half to prep for the first half and play the first half right and celebrate that and how well we did but then we're going to talk about you know what pieces of that we take with us not only into the second half but maybe even into september of 2021 but let and also let them know what what my concerns are right it's like a SWOT analysis we do in business right with our strengths weaknesses assets you know what what are threats and you know the things coming back so um i think there's a value and i'm going to do more of that myself with involving my team in that level of discussion so at least they know what we're faced with that's great dave i'm just going to yield to you for something because i want to give you the moment because you didn't ask I, I, I know you always have something. I, I, uh, to, to Bill's point, I remember when I first started, I had a business official who used to meet with me once a week, and we would go over, uh, you know, the the highlights of the week. <clears throat> and it annoyed me because I thought at the time, at least he doesn't trust me. And then as time went by, uh, you know, I, I moved on to different districts, and of course, I didn't do that. And as I got, you know. Uh, more more experience under my belt that just kind of went away and then uh, later in my career I had a business official we used to meet once a month and and we would kind of get together and talk about uh, you know sports or the web or whatever we really didn't talk about transportation because things were going so well we didn't need to uh, but the point of that is 
maybe it would be appropriate, and Brad, maybe you could weigh in on this, if we all set up a system, uh, you as transportation managers set up a system where on a uh, defined time, uh, you meet with your, your, your supervisor, superintendent, business official, whomever, and just give that little report. Uh, it may take five minutes, but if you were to set that, that, uh, that schedule up where on a, on a defined uh, a schedule, you're, you're giving that report. And certainly if things you know, terrible happen in the interim, you would report it, but at least that communication schedule is going on on a regular basis. And you don't wait until there's a crisis and then you're throwing your hands in the air and trying to, you know, uh, you know, get that meeting scheduled. I, I just think that that seems to make sense because, you know, we all know that, you know, uh, administration, superintendents, business officials, they're trying to, you know, balance the budget. They're trying to deal with education and sometimes transportation slips through the cracks. So maybe that's an appropriate way to, to get your concerns on the table without waiting until there's a crisis. Just a thought. Absolutely. I, I, we do that here. Um, for example, my director of facilities, we meet weekly. Uh, director of food service, we, we meet monthly. So it's whatever works best um, for you. And, you know, same thing. We, had, we do have regular meetings with the bus company. Um, you know, there's some weeks where, you know, the director of facilities will call me up and say, hey, I, I don't have anything this week. You want to reschedule? And I said, sure, absolutely. But it comes back to community. You've got to continue to have that and, and kind of like what you mentioned, nothing should come out of right field, right? So if you see something down the road, you got a plan for it, or let's get a plan for it. So we've got a good question about the fall, which I actually have on my list, but I want to, before asking, my, my question is basically, is it too soon to plan for fall 2021? And uh, Mark asked sort of, are we back to normal in 921? But before we get there, and I think that is a good question, um, what does the next few months look like for you? Um, you know, is the goal for your school to get everybody back in the building in person, every kid, every day? Um, is there, you know, some schools I know, uh, they haven't gone back at all. Uh, since March, they've been virtual. Um, so, and, and field trips, I know some of you are doing field trips, um, or specifically sports. Some, you know, maybe there's certain sports, yes, certain sports, no. But give me a sense of what the next, the rest of your your school year looks like and, and the adjustments maybe you've had to make, um, maybe even on the fly. Uh, I'll start with uh, Don, then we'll go yeah. to, to Brad and Bill, and then Dave, if you have anything you want to add. So before we reopened after the uh, winter, well, after Christmas uh, break, we um, we were asked during when when the kids were working fully remote to uh, could, would it be possible if the kids who come in early for club not clubs but for um, music kids who are uh, play musical instruments uh, what we do is the middle school students will go to a high school students bus and they will hop on and they will come in because our middle school and high school campuses are together you know. And so we would drop off the middle school and then proceed to the high school. It's tricky and it's very tricky now because of we, you know, we're keeping our numbers low on the buses. So as much as I want to say no, absolutely not. Are you kidding? Are you asking me this right now? Because right now we have 30 drivers in our company tomorrow. But we, you know, we I said, let's just really look at it. And so we did, it took a lot of time, but we figured out how many kids are riding and you know, told each parent where they could fit. And I'm talking about a hundred kids, not just a couple. And uh, we made it work and they're coming in and they're going and you know, they're, they're getting into to play their musical instruments and a little piece of normal. We've, um, we have kids who, which you would consider at risk because maybe they're not logging in, they're remote students and they're not logging in. Um, so they are at risk for not learning. Uh, we had a program that uh, we we put together and we worked so hard as a team. And during the time when the rest of the school was fully remote, we brought those students in and uh, we literally created routes just like that, you know, and um, and we brought those kids in and they went to a cafeteria or, or the gym and, you know, they worked on uh, just how to log into their Google Classroom, how to all those extra things that we do for, you know, for the kids. Maybe we'll need uh, summer school programs this summer to try to catch up on time lost, you know, so just, you know, there's nothing, you, you just can't say no. There's always a way to do it. It's just how. 
Yeah, that's my boss's mantra is FIO, figure it out. You know, you just got to figure it out. Brad, how are you? Yeah, we're, we're very similar to what Dawn was saying. So um, since the beginning of the year, our general education population has been coming in four days a week and our special education um, has been coming in five days a week. So um, our small buses have been running five days on our on our one day during the week where we've had very limited um, students on the big buses. We've run special routes, so that kind of we created these routes out of nowhere. Um, next week is our first week transitioning back to a full five day a week schedule um, for running our large buses. So we're, we've had two teams. Um, each each team comes in two days a week, but we're going to transition to uh, one team will come in three days a week next week, and then it'll flip flop that way. Um, now I do see some snow in the forecast for Monday, so who knows if next week will be our first week with five days. But um, as far as so, so we're kind of dealing with that, and, and uh, we also do have high risk kids. Um, our, we have some seniors that are struggling. We've got to try to get them in five days a week. We, you know, students across the board that are at risk. We absolutely want to get them in five days a week. We're carefully watching the loads on the buses. Um, overall for us we're, we're in pretty good shape we have a couple that are, are at or close to max so we may have to adjust some routes there and then planning forward for summer yeah we are planning on a summer program and um, we do uh, intend to offer transportation for that it, that's not the norm for us but we feel like it's important um, that if if it will help students get in and try to get caught up during the summer we absolutely want to provide that opportunity uh, for them and then the fall and who knows i think we kind of thought that we would be back to normal by now but um you know i i think the good thing is we've, we've learned how to manage this very well i think so we'll be able to just continue to do what we're doing and be flexible as as we go into the summer and see what september looks like but it's it's, it's our hope that we get back to every kid every day come september 5th or yeah. 4th whatever day we plan to open um, that's our goal. Good. Bill, anything you want to add? You're on mute. Thank you. I did that just to show that I'm human, right? So yeah. <laughs> the, I keep um, forgetting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just wanted to hit on the fact that like from this point forward, it was funny, like the first half of the year, I can remember starting out in the leadership team meetings and the superintendent were like, let's make Columbus Day. If we can get to Columbus Day, we're, we're going five days a week with all our elementary. And, you know, so we're like, you know, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try. So then once you hit Columbus Day, you're like, okay, shoot for Thanksgiving, right? Without interruption. And and then you, you began, we were in a mode where we didn't want to change anything because it worked and it was safe and everybody's coming to school. So it's like, you know, don't rock the boat, don't change things. And we are now in a mode of saying, as, as Dawn has said and Brad, you know, who are at risk kids? Like we got this group of kids that we, we developed, like Don did a, a special lab where it's called a Zoom lab, where on the days of the week that those kids are supposed to be home, those uh, high schoolers, they're actually gonna come in and they'll be in a Zoom lab that is supervised. Mm -hmm. So there's an adult with them, right? So they call transportation, can you do this? Yes, we'll do this, we'll figure it out. Um, we have kids that have been fully remote that are coming back for, second semester we'll figure it out we add them in we're working on that now for monday um so the winter sports and some of those activities i've already had questions about chorus kids practicing over you know can we get the kids from middle school back to manor etc so we're going to be um we're going to see trickle backs of both students and uh and that's good right because that is our ultimate objective is to get every kid in school every day like we were um, and you saw the governor yesterday took down the red zones, yellow zones, and we're starting to see a little bit of uh, relief there, opening back up a little, uh, which I think will be a sense of calm, and also the vaccinations that will take place over the next several months. Um, but the, be ready to answer that question, right? How do we do X? The creativity doesn't stop here, right? We're gonna have to continue to figure out new things. So, um, and, and focusing on staffing, it's not too early to be looking at what do you need to do to bring the team to full strength in case we aren't, you know, back to normal in September 2021. So a lot lies ahead. That's good. Uh, I'd a just like to say, I, yes. 
I just like to say, um, during the at-risk program, uh, when we brought the kids in for for that, I really it, it would be a shame if I didn't, you know, have a shout out for our drivers and bus attendants because they were painting and cleaning buildings, scraping gum, anything. They'll do anything. They want to come to work, right? So we've had them working, and they literally we asked them, can you help these kids? You didn't need to be a teacher. Their teachers were teaching them, um, you know, on their device, but it was just somebody there to help with the, you know, you know, how to log on or what they need, or just to walk a small child down to the restroom when they have to go and come back. And the drivers, I would say 75% of them were like, oh, you know, I'll help with that, you know, so they just put down their paintbrush and, you know, they put it, and next thing you know, they're they're helping kids log into Google Classroom. So uh, they just d deserve so much credit for that. Proud That's of great. Them. That's great. I want to add something. Um, Mary Jo <laughs> said in the chat room here um, regarding that she can't really hop on a bus. She said it with the social aspects um, lately, she they haven't been able to do ride-alongs. Uh, but she said what they've done is they send box breakfast sandwiches with a note of appreciation to the drivers. So I just want to pass that on along. That sounds like a neat idea. A um, couple of quick things um, regarding the driver shortage again. Um, I was on a, um, in our uh, our trade show um, yesterday and a couple of days ago, one, one uh, school district actually ran um, an advertisement on the radio for two weeks, cost them $1,100. It ran, um, every, I think he said it ran once or twice an hour during those two weeks, and they were really looking for monitors at first. What they wound up coming doing was for the first week, um, they ran certain ads, and then the second week, they were able to get drivers or monitors that became drivers, and they actually had real people talking on these ads, so it wasn't just some voiceover. But what they were doing was they were actually hiring monitors, so you didn't have to have a CDL license, so get them into the system. And then they were paying for their, you know, helping them train for the CDL license, paying for the CDL. And so they, that's how they grew. Um, they got, they ran the ads for two weeks because they said we need, they were down four drivers and they secured six. And then mm -hmm. it made me think about Bill yesterday. You talked about um, getting some teachers, I believe it was, to become drivers. And that gave you a little wiggle room. So you knew when you really were in code red. Um, because you had a little bit of uh, a little bit of flexibility in there. You want to share a little bit more about that that process? Yeah, we um, we don't have many drivers and don't have many subs, so our bench is is very shallow, if you will. And so November December we began looking at how to build the bench deeper, and we had some drivers, some uh, coaches that are actually teachers that got their license to help, kind of specifically with sports trips. So I went and met with them and asked them if they'd be willing to learn bus routes just one bus route. I will tell you the, the one coach, he's a coach and phys ed uh, teacher at the school. And uh, he told me after riding the bus, he said, I always thought I had a healthy respect for what everybody did in this district. But he goes, I'm here to tell you, nobody has any idea what it's like to be out there on a bus in the dark, trying to find a house number. He said, I'm totally blown away. I will help you if you teach me one thing. But he goes, if I have to, if you call me at five and say, I want you to jump on something I don't know, I can't do it. He goes, I'm scared. So it's, uh, That's good. but That's it, good. It just, it's the reality. And he has, we put together a plan to orientate him. And he is now, um, he knows one bus. And then I took that driver and that driver can float around onto the others. So we, we built you know two more. With Wayfinder, he'll be able to take any, any route he wants. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, I just made a shame. That was a shameless plug. Um, I can't believe how quickly the time is. we're really wrapping up. I want to go through the panelists one last time. I'm going to end with you, Dave, and then I'll close this out. Um, just I'm going to just leave it pretty open. What's one takeaway that you would want one attendee to have either before they go back to go back to their office to share with a colleague or maybe something that they're going to share with their superintendent? Um, what's one thing that you hope that someone takes away from um, our discussion today? And I'm going to start with Brad just to shake it up a little bit. Go to Don, close with Bill, and then ask Dave if he could uh, say some final words. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, one of my things I tell everybody when they, they walk into my office and they say, oh my God, we 
it's going to be okay. We are going to get through this. We're all feeling the pain and it's going to be okay. And if you do need a break, you know, tell your supervisor, I just, I need a break. I, you know, it, everything's going to be okay. That's very good. It's good. You can't hear that enough. Uh, Don? I would say, um, you know, just to continue to future proof your operation. I think that um, the people today who are your dispatchers and your head drivers, they're, they're going to be the future transportation leaders and they're going to have lived through this mess and, you know, hopefully the future will be brighter. But, you know, I think that we're, uh, you know, we're just creating future leaders here through this crisis. Very good. Very good. Bill? Well, back in uh, August, June or July, August, somewhere in there when we were doing these, you know, I ended with stay calm, work the problem. And that's really what Brad was just saying, right? So we'll get through this. So I would encourage everybody, if there's a takeaway from this webinar, it's to look back at where we've been in the last four or five months and figure out what you're going to take with you as you go forward, right? Figure out what you're going to hold on to. Uh, there's a lot of good things that have happened and we shouldn't let them go. Absolutely, that's excellent. David? Yeah, Ricky, always leave me last, so I've got to come up with some profound statement after everyone else has made these great profound statements. But to just to piggyback on Bill and Brad, I heard something the other day from someone who I, I respect, and they said, uh, uh, hang in there, this is only temporary. And, uh, you know, it's true. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, you know this too shall pass. Uh, and I think everyone's working hard at it. I mean, I, every day I learn something from a transportation professional that I never thought of. And uh, we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, I think we need to support each other if we need to, uh, you know, be, be flexible and understand there's a lot of pressure out there and uh, give each other a break, right? You know, and, uh, you know, work together to get this, uh, get this problem solved uh, because it is only temporary. We'll come out the other side as better. Uh, you know, I, personally and, and certainly professionally. I watched a documentary the other day and it was about some massive, massive blizzard in like the turn of the century in some Midwestern state where the, literally the snow was over the houses. Like, you know, it was a story tall. And what they went through, the ingenuity um, that, you know, how people rallied, maybe it wasn't turn of the century, but it might've been like 1920s, very, very difficult time. And many, many people live and talk about it and also what they let lessons learned but you you get you know it's not forever and i think i just all of you guys saying that is is really good tony got some final thoughts here i sure do i tell you and uh i think i want to thank you guys again for uh, being part of this panel today you know the way i see it, again i'm this person that i'm not in the trenches so i remember how you guys the conversation and almost like there's a little bit of anxiety and even the questions all that there was and uh, I'm an outsider here looking in. So therefore I could see how I was like six months ago. And right now, I, it's almost like the same level when, you know, ever I have a 10 year old son, right? So if you haven't seen him for like six months, you're gonna go, holy cow, did he get big, right? He got really tall. And uh, well, I see him all the time. So I don't realize he got big, but here I am the same thing. I mean, Bill, you don't need to get any taller. You're already really tall, right? But here's the, as an outsider, how much you've all grown professionally is amazing. But you're just thinking, like the, the conversation is so loosey goose. Oh yeah, well, you know, we figured out like, holy cow, I remember six months ago, even the questions were like at the anxiety level, very high. I'm sure it didn't, you know, I'm not saying your anxiety is less, but it, you project it, that's much more calmer. Again, as an outsider, I see it, almost like you would see a kid you don't see a teenager for like six months and go, wow, I got tall. So it's that same thing. So again, and very, very honored to be part of you guys. Thank you. That's, that's good stuff. You don't realize how much you've done. Uh, and you, you're, that's a good point, Tony. You can kind of, we have a different type of perspective, a little bit from the outside. Um, so again, I want to thank our panelists as well. Don, Brad, Bill, awesome. Uh, great, great stuff. And, and, uh, David, you're, uh, you're a rock star. Um, I wanna just encourage anybody who's been attending, um, if you have a story to share, to please email us. Again, you, you can be a TransFinder client. If you're not a TransFinder client, we can help change that. But if you're not a TransFinder client, we wanna hear your stories. We wanna hear um, the best practices, because we really are putting together 
everybody who's done something unique, innovative, we can learn from it, and we know that. Um, and I will say also that um, we may tap you to be a web, be on a webinar because um, we'd like to hear from you directly and share your stories. Um, we don't have a hard date yet set for February, but we will be back next month. So stay tuned for that. Um, and we, we're right now, the plan is to go monthly. And if we, uh, today's attendance was through the roof. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we may, if, you, if you, you tell your friends and family to join us, maybe we'll go every other week. But for now, we'll see you sometime in February. Until then, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And thanks again for joining us today. Thanks, everybody. Be safe out there, Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye, everybody.